let's bring in another central figure in the ongoing investigation surrounding allegations of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia during the 2016 election, longtime Trump advisor and political strategist Roger Stone. Roger, good to see you. Thanks for joining today. Great to be here. Sorry we're a little late. No worries, Roger. What do you make of this? Did Manafort meeting Assange? I would assume, Roger, that the Ecuadorian embassy, where Assange has been for the last seven years, will have a record of who comes in and out. This this seems to me to be pretty easy to prove. What's going on here? Yeah, I think it's whole cloth. I mean, first of all, between the surveillance cameras and the logs where you have to sign in, the world would know. Right. Um, And, of course, passport records, uh, 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 Immigration records, uh, would, customs records would show whether Manafort was even in the country at that time. So I believe this is entirely false. Uh, certainly, if it were true, Paul Manafort never told me about it and never showed much interest in WikiLeaks or Assange and what they particularly had. So um, I, I think it is more fake news uh, just for another largely fake news day. All right, let's talk about someone else who's being described by outlets like CNN as a Roger Stone associate. That's best-selling author Jerome Corsi. Now, he's author of multiple controversial books. The latest is Killing the Deep State, which we mentioned here on the show. Corsi has been in the news a lot the last few days. He's saying he will not agree to a plea deal with Mueller. Now, this also pertains to who knew what and when with regards to the WikiLeaks email dump. The claim is that but Corsi possibly acted as an intermediary between you and WikiLeaks. Now, what Jerome Corsi is saying is that the deal for him is to plead guilty to one count of perjury, but he's not going to do it. And here's why. This is what he told CNN, quote, they can put me in prison the rest of my life. I am not going to sign a lie. Roger, explain this. A lot of information here. People are reading this as Robert Mueller is twisting Jerome Corsi's arm and trying to force him to attest to something that isn't true. What is going on here? Uh, It's kind of hard to follow because it's moving so quickly. So yesterday, Corsi said that he was not going to agree to a plea deal because the government was trying to get him to adhere to a narrative that was false. Uh, The truth is that Jerry Corsi did original research regarding the Podesta brothers' business activities in Russia with the oligarchs around Putin. He pointed me out to numerous public sites where I could read this myself, including the Panama Papers published in April of 2016. On August 21st, I tweeted what is now iconic, saying the Podesta's time in the barrel will come. Five days earlier, I had tweeted, John Podesta makes Paul Manafort look like St. Thomas Aquinas. So there is some consistency here. Now, of course, he is saying that the memo I asked him to write on the 21st, which he didn't provide until the 31st, capsulizing all of this public information was some kind of cover story that I was getting heat over my tweet. Well, that makes no sense because my tweet was not controversial until six weeks later when WikiLeaks published material Uh, allegedly stolen from John Podesta's emails. The bottom line remains the same, John. I had no advance notice of the source or the content of any of the allegedly stolen or allegedly hacked material published by WikiLeaks. And that hasn't changed. So it appears that the Mueller team is trying to jam Jerry up, perhaps jam me up in some kind of perjury trap. Where's the Russian collusion? Where's the WikiLeaks collaboration? Where's any evidence that I received any documents whatsoever and passed them on to Donald Trump or the Trump campaign? That simply didn't happen. All right, Roger, just for the viewers, I want to clarify what you were just talking about. This all stems from a Daily Caller report today. In that report, Corsi said the following, quote, Corsi says he received immunity for testimony that he and Stone, Roger Stone, developed a cover story to explain Stone's now infamous August 21st, 2016 tweet that it would, quote, soon be the Podesta's time in the barrel, end quote. Corsi testified that he and Stone hatched a plan in which Corsi would write a memo about the Podestas to allow Stone, Roger Stone, to cite as the basis for his tweet. The revelation, if accurate, this all from the Daily Caller now, the revelation, if accurate, would undercut Roger Stone's testimony to the House Intelligence Committee that opposition research on the Podesta brothers' business activities was the catalyst for the tweet. So, Roger, now in that context, 
as reported in the Daily Caller, how do you respond? Categorically false. Uh, first of all, I didn't have the, the memo until after the tweet, and the memo was sent out to various news organizations. But more importantly, it's illogical. Why would I need a cover story? There's no Mueller investigation at that time. There's no congressional investigation at that time. There's no public controversy about my tweet because Podesta's emails have not yet been published and wouldn't be published for six weeks. It's funny what a federal prosecutor can get you to say under pressure. But in this case, Dr. Corsi's incorrect. By the way, he goes on to say that he told Mueller that I knew about the Billy Bush NBC revelations in advance, and then I called Jerry Corsi and asked him to contact Assange to tell him to move his first data dump to change the narrative from that story. That's not logical either. Jerry Corsi didn't know uh, Julian Assange, never had any contact with him that I was aware of, and I never made any such request. In fact, I learned about the Billy Bush disclosures when the rest of America did at about four o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, Jerry Corsi, I think, is somewhat out to lunch here. He is directly contradicting a number of things that he said in an interview with OAN yesterday. That's about where we are. All right, Roger, we got about a minute left, not even about 45 seconds. Top of drudge today. You say Donald Trump's not going to run for re-election in 2020. What's going on there? I think the president could be so successful in bringing this economy back. If we have two more years like the first two years, he could have achieved all of his goals. Let's remember, the presidency has cost him $2 billion. He's not serving for president as president because he needs an ego trip or because he needs the trappings or the pomp and circumstance. He ran for president to fix the country. If he fixes it in the next two years, why should he take the personal abuse and the constant investigations and the personal attacks? So I could see him going down as one of our greatest presidents and riding off into the sunset. That is what I was saying. There you go. Roger Stone, as always, Roger, great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you.